Hello and welcome to pa Pastor George's Spiritual Warfare Boot Camp. This little show is being produced by Mercy Seat Production and it's broadcast live on Ustream.com. I'm your host and teacher for tonight, Pastor George McVeigh. And if you find these videos, then you're at the very least interested in knowing more about spiritual warfare. And that's a good thing. Every Christian needs to be aware of the spiritual battle that's going on around them at all times and be prepared to fight the good fight. Scripture tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15 that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, to be workers that need not to be ashamed, to rightly divide the word of truth. And in spiritual warfare, that is more important than anything else. So this is the first of several videos that, that we're going to do. Um, we're going to do a whole um, series of teachings on this, uh, 14 total episodes uh, over 14 weeks. We're going to do uh, the first 13 starting tonight, uh, every Friday night at 8.30. I promise you they won't be any longer than 30 minutes. We're, we're going to make that commitment to keep each session to only 30 minutes long. Um, tonight's we're calling episode zero because I'm not really going to teach you anything today. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you my qualifications, why I'm qualified to teach on this topic, as well as give you just kind of an overview of what the next 12 weeks is going to be, and then um, leave you with a little teaser for the last one, um, which will be longer and at a separate time. Um, what you'll find is that um, not only will each of these sessions be 30 minutes long, but they'll be free on my YouTube page for the next two weeks. Um, after they're broadcast, each one for two weeks after it's broadcast will stay up for free. After that, um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to charge a little bit, but I'm trying to keep it very low. It'll only be 99 cents. I wish I could keep them free, but there are costs associated with this kind of a ministry, and to keep doing these broadcasts, I have to cover those costs. Um, so I hope everybody understands that. Uh, I am tr keeping it to the bare minimum. It will not ever be more than 99 cents an episode. Uh, and there will be, once they're all done, there will be the opportunity to buy them both as DVDs if you want them or to download them from my website, um, which I will give you the link to here in a couple of weeks when it's finished being rebuilt. And um, either way, you'll be able to get them um, at a discounted rate for the entire 14 week session. Um, so let's do this. Let's, uh, because we're talking about such a very serious topic, I want us to start each week um, with prayer. So if you'll allow me to, I, I just, tonight I want to open with prayer and then tell you a little bit about myself, um, why I'm teaching on this, why it's such a big thing for me, and um, as well as uh, tell you what we're going to be studying over the next few weeks. So, uh, Father God, we just ask right now that, a as we heard in, in the opening song that played just a little bit, your anointing follow me, God, tonight, even though we're not teaching, teaching as we discuss the things that we're going to be teaching, that your presence come, and that people see how important these topics are for every Christian to know about, not just those who think they're called to spiritual warfare, but that every Christian will realize through these broadcasts and through these sessions that they, that every Christian is called to spiritual warfare. Father God, no words that aren't your words tonight. Keep me on track, keep me focused, and help me to say only what you would have me to say. In Jesus' name, uh, amen. L let me tell you a little bit about myself. Here, Here's why I feel uniquely called to teach on, on this topic. Uh, I, the only reason I even bring this up is um, I, I have taught on spiritual warfare for my entire ministry career as a, as a youth pastor and then a uh, assistant pastor and then a church planting pastor and, and now as a, as a revivalist and evangelist and a writer. Um, and often I get asked, um, what qualifies you to speak on that? This is a topic that only certain Christians are called to speak about. Well, let me tell you my unique qualifications. Um, I was raised in a Christian home. My father was a church elder. He was the missions treasurer at our home. And uh, I was even born 
according to my mother, because of a fleece that she placed, like Hannah did with Samuel. She couldn't, the doctors had told her she would never have children, and she placed a fleece before God, telling him that if she would, if he would just give her a son, she would dedicate him to full-time Christian service. And just nine and a half months later, um, I was born, and that is exactly what she did. Um, so I've been told I've had this call in my life from before my conception. Um, because of that, my family sent me only to Christian schools. Um, I went to the best Christian schools in in our community right up until I was 14 years of age. And at that, it was the mid-80s, and like so many other families, our family ran into financial troubles, and we just could not afford it anymore. And so my parents dropped me into the local junior high school, which just happened to be the worst junior high school in our community. It was known for drugs. It was known for crime. It was known for gangs. Um, and that's what I was dropped into. But I believed everything I had been taught my whole life, and I believed that these people were miserable and that I had what they needed to make them feel better. And so I tried to stand up and be a strong witness for Christ. And as we all know, junior high, middle school, as it's called now, is brutal. And uh, having missed the first year and being dropped in on the second year, I didn't have friends or any of that. And because of the fact that I would stand in the middle of the courtyard and try to preach on a daily basis, I was beaten, bullied, made fun of, picked on, hurt, pretty much destroyed emotionally. Um, I, and I made no friends. I had no friends until one day when things looked like they couldn't get any worse. Uh, this young lady came and invited me to a party. First one I'd ever been invited to. I knew my parents wouldn't approve, but hey, like most teenagers, I snuck out, went to the party. <laughs> At the party, I was approached by uh, the girl's older sister, who who was highly involved in the occult, uh, and she told me that if I would just hang around after the party, she would introduce me to some people who could show me how to make those who were hurting me, those who were picking on me, those that were making my life miserable pay for what they had done. Um, to a young teenager who was suddenly the most miserable person he knew, that sounded really good. And so I joined a satanic cult. Um, and I even signed a contract in my own blood that stated that I was selling my soul to Satan in return for power and protection. And I immersed myself in that life for three and a half years. And then something happened. Something very scary and very supernatural. And because of that, I decided this life wasn't for me and I wanted out. But because of my disillusionment with Christianity, I didn't want to be part of that either. Um, I was told I could leave, but I was warned never to speak of anything that I had seen, done, or been taught, taught while in the cult. Um, and so what happened was I agreed, and I ran from both God and the demons that chased me even though I left for seven years before I finally returned to God, found my own personal faith in Jesus Christ. But still, even after that, I was tormented daily by demonic forces. And they spoke to me and told me over and over again never to talk about what had happened in my past. And that went on for four more years. And then I finally completely surrendered to God. I answered that call to preach that my mother said that I have and that I truly did feel. And because... I did it because I saw other young people, just like I had been, who weren't being taught the things they knew to stand up for their beliefs in the right way, in a loving way, in a way that made them not the laughing stock. And, and I saw teenagers who were, they were just floundering in their faith, and it looked like a lot of them were going to, to end up down the same path I started. And so I surrendered. Um, started learning what I believed and, and became a youth pastor. 
um, was ordained about two years later and shortly became the assistant pastor with an emphasis on youth and children. But something kept happening through all of my ministry experience and even on until the day. And that was I seemed to keep being drawn into these intense deliverance ministry situations with people who had been just like I was. I began to share my past, but only with a few. And then God led me into church planning. And not just normal church planning, he took me to one of the darkest spiritual places in America and asked me to start planning churches. A place where most people don't know, but is the head of both the Wiccan church and the satanic movement in America. And I'm not going to name the place because I don't want to scare anybody who might live there. But the truth is... As soon as I moved there, my past, my satanic past, came rushing back to the forefront. I began to war against darkness in my personal life and in my ministry. And, and God showed me how he had allowed all this to happen to equip me for that. And the truth is, I've never looked back. Now, I'm a writer and a revivalist as well as a part-time associate teaching pastor. My emphasis in my ministry now is mostly spiritual warfare it, and particularly in the spiritual warfare that's going on all around all of us and how for normal everyday Christian people to bring deliverance to those in their communities and to bring breakthrough through communities that are just under such dark spiritual domination. I've been doing that for just over 20 years now. And lately, God has quickened within my spirit the need and desire to help prepare for the end-time battle that's coming. So let's talk about these sessions and what we're going to learn in them. Um, starting next week, we're going to start with session one. Session one is the battle is real. We'll look at the fact that there is a battle going on around us every single day. We'll see what scriptures have to say about that battle and what they teach us about the fact that we're involved in this battle, whether we know it or not, or whether we want to be involved in it or not. Learn that we need to prepare for that battle, or we'll fall prey to the enemy. That's session one. Session two is, is a session I like to call God's Armor. It's ours to use. And we'll start to learn about the two different parts of the armor of God that we are given use of, and why both parts are important. We'll do a quick overview on both parts and spend most of session two looking at why God gave them to us and what that means in our lives that he gave it to that he gave us use of his armor. Session three will break and dig into those pieces of the armor more and we're going to start defensive armor first. That's session three, defensive armor first. We'll study each piece of the defensive armor of God given to us as laid out in Ephesians 6. And we'll see why this is the is only the defensive armor, and we'll look at what each piece is used for and why. We'll also talk about why we need that armor first before we can take on the second half of the armor of God. And that's what session four is about. The offensive armor of God for fighting in the streets. We'll study the official the offensive armor of God that's laid out in Isaiah 59. And we'll see why we have permission to use it why it's necessary to successfully fight against our enemies. And then comes session five. And session five is, who's the enemy? Lots and lots of people that teach on spiritual warfare will not talk about the demonic side of things. And the reason is because they're scared. They're scared if they talk about Satan, if they talk about his demons, that that opens up some kind of attack against them. Well, you can't fight what you don't know. Sun, Sing, Sun Tzu said it best in The Art of War, that you're to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And by that he meant we have to know who our enemies are. We have to know how they think so that we know how they're going to attack and how, so that we're ready. So what we're going to do is that we're going to learn their most important tactics, the ones that are the demonics go to and why they're their go-to. And 
will start using that to learn how to defeat them in our lives and in the lives of the people around us. And then session, session six, which is grab your weapons. We'll learn what the major weapons of our warfare are, what God has given us to rightly destroy the strongholds of the enemies in our lives and the lives of those that he brings into our contact. We'll learn how to use them to fight for ourselves and how to properly use them to bring deliverance to those taken by the enemy. Session 7, we'll look into POWs and other victims. We'll start learning about the three classifications of people who are under control of the devil. We'll also learn how to use those weapons we talked about in Session 6 to start bringing them freedom, healing, and salvation. In Session 8, we'll, we'll dive into one of those three in detail and we'll look at releasing the captives that's session eight releasing the captives we'll spend the whole session talking about how to recognize what a captive is and how to help them find freedom and an understanding of the truth that is Jesus Christ and the lies that they believe that make them captives session nine we'll look at prisoners and we're calling that set the prisoners free We'll spend that whole session learning how to recognize what a prisoner is and what is necessary to bring them to deliverance and freedom. We'll also learn when not to attempt to bring freedom or deliverance to a prisoner because this is a very special circumstance. And if we do it wrong, things get worse instead of better. So we're going to spend a whole session just on prisoners. Session 10 we're calling sold out soldiers. We'll discuss why someone would choose to follow the enemy willingly like I did and what they think they would gain from following him. I'll be sharing a lot of my personal testimony in a little more detail on how to help people who were just like me find a way of escape and the freedom of deliverance in their lives that will allow them a second chance at salvation. Session 8, we're calling Bought or Sold. We'll continue to talk about those who have willingly given themselves to the enemy. Specifically, we're going to talk about that classification that I myself was in. The ones that sign a contract selling their soul to the devil. We'll talk about what that means and how to bring them to freedom from this very effective trick of the enemy. It's a trick. It's not real. And we'll look at how it's a trick and we'll look at what we need to do to show them that it's a trick and through that bring them to freedom and a relationship with Jesus Christ. That brings us to session 12 and this one I'm calling spiritual, full, spiritual furlough. Every soldier needs some time to recover from battle and recharge. In this session, I'm going to show you the spiritual principle of ministering from overflow. I'll share with you how Jesus himself recovered and recharged between one battle and the next while he was here on earth. And we'll give some helpful suggestions that help me stay ready for battle at all times. Um, hopefully they'll work for you, and if not, we'll at least give you some principles by which you can find your own ways to recharge and be ready for the next one. And that leads us to our last session, which is session 13. We're calling it the bonus session, and it's titled Top Secret. In other words, I'm not going to tell you what this session's about until the week before I teach it. This is a session that I have never publicly spoken on before in 20 years of ministry and yet more and more God has told me over and over again now is the time it is a session that every believer needs to see it's the only session that will never have a price on it it will be free forever when it comes out that's the bonus session and if you stay tuned you'll get more information on what that is in session 12 I hope this 25 minutes that we've taken gives you a good look at 
who I am and what we're going to be covering in these 13 remaining sessions. I hope that that they inspire you to even now start seeking scriptures and looking at these things yourself and and that you'll pray and honestly seek God about whether or not these 13 sessions on spiritual warfare are for you. Let me close by praying for you as we seek God and commit to beginning this training. The training of spiritual warfare boot camp. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for every person that's watching this video. Whether they were here tonight live or whether they're watching the repeat on, on YouTube or, or whether somebody has handed them the videos on down the road. God, I just pray your special anointing and blessing over them even now, that you send your Holy Spirit who teaches all things to begin to open their hearts, to begin to open their minds, to begin to open their ears to hear what your Spirit is saying to our church in these last dark days. Father God, I pray for a hedge of protection around them and those that fall under their ministry and their life, God, and just wrap your arms around each and every one of them tonight. Let them know that this is the direction and this is the time to take that direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for turning in tonight. Uh, I hope to see you next Friday at 8.30 as well. Again, for session one, which is The Battle is Real. Until then, God bless you. Stay close to Jesus. Bye.